But let's begin here with some international news. Russian President Vladimir Putin announcing a partial mobilization of his military reserves. In a speech on Russian television this morning, Putin said he will put those military reserve troops on active duty, and he warned the West not to come to Ukraine's aid. The move follows a counterattack in the northeast of the country that led to significant setbacks for his forces. CBS News reporter Mary Ilyushina joins us now from Latvia to talk about this. Mary, good morning. Uh, what does this partial mobilization mean? How many extra troops will Russia be able to deploy to the conflict? And I guess, importantly, is this an admission that things are not going according to plan? Good morning. Um, yes, so Russians woke up today to news that 300,000 men are going to be drafted as part of this partial mobilization. You know, Russia began this invasion with about, with about between 100,000, 150,000 um, troops. So they're now engaging a pretty large force. But the concern is that a lot of this Force, which is going to include people who served previously in the military, have some sort of combat experience. So it's a more limited um, mobilization that, you know, putting the entire country on the warpath, um, that they're not necessarily still well trained or prepared for battle or motivated to fight in it. And it's also seen as an admission by the Kremlin that things are not going as well as they've presented to the public for many months because they have been saying it's a very limited operation and it needs to stay this way. But now they are partially acknowledging that, you know, they need a pretty significant reinforcement. So then how is this address likely to be viewed in Russia? Well, there's quite a bit of panic because, uh, you know, in February and March, a lot of Russians feared that exact uh, mobilization. There were a lot of rumors flying around and Russians tried to flee the country. and Many have fled um, mm. in, in those early days of the war. And we're seeing the same kind of chaos unfolding now. You know, tickets are sold out from Moscow and other big cities to um, the very few countries that, you know, Russians can go to without visas at the moment. Um, you know, the social media narrative and, you know, discussions are all circulating around how to not, you know, send your brothers, uh, husbands and the kids to war. So there's quite a bit of, you know, panic uh, in regards to the mobilization. This address comes a day after Russian-controlled regions in eastern and southern Ukraine announced plans to hold referendum votes on becoming part of Russia. Uh, do you think that these events are connected? And what do you think the overall strategy is for Putin? Well, it's in as a way to retaliate for a lot of the territorial losses and strategic losses Russia has suffered in the past couple of weeks and months um, because uh, Russia had to retreat from northeastern Ukraine and basically lost control of the territories it was about to, you know, um, install this referendum, which is, you know, just a pretext for annexing these lands. Um, and Putin sort of alluded in his speech in the morning that once these uh, territories become part of Russia, because that's sort of the expectation once the Kremlin counts the votes, um, that, you know, if any attack on those territories will be seen as an attack on Russia, which mm. kind of unties his hands to use all means that are available to him. And he made this threat, you know, saying, uh, addressing Western countries, if they threaten um, him with nuclear weapons or mention nuclear weapons, he says the winds can change the other way, sort of threatening, you know, kind of rushing up this um, rhetoric about using nuclear weapons. So, but we obviously not, don't know whether, hopefully he's not going to use them. Yeah, Mary, uh, thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank you.